we're back with John. Uh, VF3YT50. This is a 50 taper. Yeah. Um, a lot more. We've been talking about horsepower and torque. We've got more of both on this machine. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the 50 taper high performance spindle on this machine. It's got a uh, maximum peak of 60 horsepower, uh, a two speed gearbox in it. All the 50 tapers have gearboxes, but this right. has the additional uh, higher horsepower motor in right. it. Uh, set up a very, very similar demo. Again, it's 4130 um, uh, low alloy steel and um, uh, the cutting tools used in this demonstration. I'm basically using the same cutter that we had in that VF2, except this is the four inch version. So it's one inch um, uh, larger on the diameter. And uh, when you step up to the four inch, this is a seven flute cutter. So we're using the same insert on that. I programmed the same surface footage, 850, as well as the same feed per tooth, which is uh, 9 thou, uh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 9 thou and 8 tenths, eight tenths. a hair under 10 thousandths feed per tooth. The second tool in this is going to be the 3 inch, 90 degree shell mill. Um, so this 3 inch version is a six flute cutter. Uh, it uses the same grade of inserts as that, obviously a different style. Those are the 45s, these are the 90s. But as far as surface footage and feed per tooth, exactly the same as that previous cutter, 850 SFM and just a hair under 10 thou feed per tooth. This cutter is going to go uh, 3.325 uh, deep, 325 thousandths deep okay. on this one. With a How deep are you going on the, face, on the face mill? I'm sorry? How deep are you going on the uh, face the mill? The face mill is going to be 220 thousandths deep and three inch wide width of cut with the four inch cutter. So three quarters of the width uh, and 220 thousandths deep. Um, the third cutter in this demonstration is the inch and a half insert drill. We're going to pop a couple of holes with that baby. Uh, programmed at 600 surface feet and uh, about six and a half thou per revolution in that same steel. And then the, uh, the last tool is a 45 degree chamfer mill. This is the three flute version, um, programmed at 800 surface feet and seven and a half thou feed per tooth. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we're ready to go. Why don't you hit cycle go. start over there? You're gonna let me I do I did that? this, do you I wanna, did. Uh, so, sorry, who are we gonna, is Sal gonna, or you're gonna come in, right, Tyler? Get, okay. get Tyler in here. You trust Gotta me Gotta get to... close for this Yeah, one. yeah, I think <laughs> I can let, uh, an engineer push cycle start. <laughs> I can always blame you. You programmed it. All right, you ready to go, Tyler? All right, let's do it. Uh, I did the same thing, uh, recording the spindle load uh, of each of these tools. Oh, you can see better than I. What do you have over there? On the spindle load. We're right around 100%. Yeah, just under. The, um, the next cutter coming up, the three inch 90 degree shell mill is gonna like, make a fair amount more noise than that. The 90 degree cutters obvious are always make more noise when yes. cutting than the 45s. But uh, you can see the, again those chips coming off straw colored and then turning blue in the pan. Three and a half, I'm sorry, one and a half inch diameter drill. And that spindle load is under 60%, so you could push that a little more yeah. if you were so inclined.
Yeah, with this drill, I wouldn't increase the spindle speed as much as I would push the feed rate a little harder. Okay. There's our three holes, and then we'll come in with the chamfer tool and hit the sharp edges here. Clean it all up. And of course, this is minimum spindle load. Yeah, Taking yeah. almost no material. Just taking the sharp edges off. And I think what we'll do when this tool's finished, maybe we'll grab some chips. You've been talking about how they're straw colored when they come off the tool, yeah. and then the color that you like to see at the end. Maybe I'll scoop some out of there and okay. we'll get a close up of them. This whole room's got that smell of steel. <laughs> yeah. I love the smell of steel in the morning. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a unique um, odor when it, steel gets cut. Yes. So what are the different, you did, you did a video, as I mentioned, on the chamfer mills. What are the different angles that we have available? Uh, yeah, so on the chamfer tools, we have it, we, they come in measured from center line, 15 degrees, 30 degrees. We have several different 45 degree versions and then a 60 degree version. Okay, that's right. Okay, we can open the doors, Tyler can get a good shot of the, of the finished part there and all the smoke. And you wanna grab some chips? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. And Tyler, maybe just hang out here and, and get a close-up of those chips. So I can tell this is the chip that came off of the um, off of the three-inch 90-degree face mill. We've got nice commas coming off of there. That's a little bit hot. <laughs> and then here's chips from that drill. Those were obviously easy to come by. Those that came out really, really nice. Uh, obviously, they're not uh, blue color because there was coolant, through spindle coolant being right. used on those. We got really good chip breakage here. These things were cutting right, just perfect. Nice. Okay, and then once again, the way you program these, you want to go through the, the torque charts real quickly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me bring up real fast that um, the recorded... You can come out, Tyler. Here were the recorded spindle loads of that cutter. So we took that, that four inch face mill that was going uh, 220 thousandths deep and three inches width of cut. And we pulled 116% as a maximum spindle load okay. while that tool was in the cut. The second cutter, the three inch 90 degree did 96% uh, spindle load. And then that drill pulled 78% spindle load. Okay. Again, we, um, we did the, um, torque charts for this particular machine. And you can see here, again, it's a little bit busy, but we're really paying attention to the torque in low gear. Uh, none of the tools ran above the three, uh, just under 3000 RPM is the shift point. So all these tools ran in low gear and that was 200% spindle load, right? Our cut here running at 812 RPM. So I got to find the right RPM. And again, my percentage was 116%. Though when I made this chart, it was 113%. So I took the 113% spindle load, divided it by 200, the maximum available, and got a conversion factor, and then multiplied that by the amount of torque at 812 RPM. And that gives me the calculation of 210 foot pounds of torque uh, that that tool pulled. Okay. And you can see, uh, again, just over 
110 percent on the spindle, 113 percent. Right. Uh, the, the next three tool, inch, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, the three-inch mill. Uh, the three-inch shell mill ran at 1,082 RPM, so that's why uh, you know our line is over here at that RPM. And you can see our top, our t our torque is dropping pretty dramatically right there. So I'm somewhere in the 290, 280 foot-pounds of torque at that RPM, and my spindle load ended up being 149 foot-pounds for that, for that tool. And that, um, again, came in right at the 100%, you know, 99% spindle load. Right. So I was at half of the available maximum torque at that RPM. And then the last tool, which is the inch and a half drill, was running at uh, 1,528 RPM. Now we have quite a bit less torque down there. We're down about 200 foot-pounds for this calculation. And again, the 80% spindle load divided by uh, uh, 200 possible percent spindle load is giving me a conversion factor that I multiply by the torque at that RPM, and I ended up pulling about 80 foot-pounds of torque with that tool. Great. Okay, All I think right. that's gonna just about wrap it up. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm gonna come in here, we'll wrap it up with John. I, I think one of the things that, that we talked, to, the three of us talked about yesterday, um, we, we kind of had fun with it of some of the, the people on YouTube who like to post comments of they've got a Haas machine, they can't cut steel. Um, yeah. There's, we have the contingency in place to help those people. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's not even, um, uh, not so much uh, comments on YouTube as it is like um, the blogs that uh, machinists blog sites where people go on a blog site and ask a question about their Haas machine and I read this and I see that somebody's responded to it and they're not a Haas customer either but on their machine this and they're giving them advice and I'm thinking to myself why doesn't this person just contact their local Haas factory outlet or the Haas factory Yep. to get expert advice about that machine. We're the ones who run these machines all day long. We know most about these machines. Don't ask somebody on the internet that you don't even know <laughs> who may or may not be giving you information, good information on purpose. They might be leading you down the wrong. Who knows what's they going on in the agenda. internet? Who knows? Yep. It's really important that you contact us because we're here to help you. Again, I've always said that uh, at Haas Automation, customer service, we want to cons we consider ourselves a world-class customer service organization. We're here to help our customers get the most out of their machine tools. I, I think that's a great conclusion. I, I don't have I anything to add I couldn't have said it myself. That. Well, yeah. we want to thank all you for watching. Thank you for the comments. Um, we're going to be back with you doing some more Demo Day Lives in 2021. Not sure right. exactly yeah, we don't what that's going to look like. Is, but yep. But we'll, sure, we'll surely be back because I think we'll all be in the same place exactly. <laughs> beginning next year. So thank you all for watching. Thank you so much for thanks. joining us. See you in 2021.